Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. And this is, I think, the third and final installment of our air fuel ratio little mini series that we got going on within the larger engine tuna procedure uh, check checklist series. And this is going to be a little bit more of a quick update than a full blown episode, but I do want to show you guys how I went about fixing my uh, mixture issue. So just to recap, in the first episode, we installed this AEM air fuel ratio gauge. Uh, be sure to check that out because we actually spent most of that episode uh, freaking out that our engine was running lean, which is what the gauge showed when we uh, hooked it up for the first time and turned the engine on. The second episode, we actually went out for a test drive and that made us feel a lot better because the, the lean mixture issue, um, it turned out that that was limited to the idle. It wasn't um, showing up when the engine was under load uh, on the road. And if anything, it was slightly on the rich side. Again, that's kind of where we want to be, but we won't be able to really tune into what exact uh, ratio that we want until we're at the dyno and checking the power output um, you know, on the machine. Which brings us to the third episode, uh, which is this one. Now we know that our lean mixture issue is limited to the idle, and we found out that this is a, um, this is a spare AFM unit that I have here, and I just popped the cover off just to show you guys what's inside. So there is a screw uh, right here on the AFM which adjusts the mixture only at idle. I do not think this, uh, or messing with this screw, um, adjusts your airflow, or sorry, adjusts your mixture throughout the rev range. So that is hopefully the only thing that we have to touch. Now, if you're not as lucky as me and you notice that you are running either lean or pig rich, uh, when you're out on the road, there's really three things that you need to check. One is the AFM, and going back to this spare unit that I have here, again, just a quick explanation of how this works. Uh, there's a little flap inside that moves as air is crammed through the AFM, and more air that is crammed in, more this flap moves, which in turn tells the ECU how much uh, fuel to add in to the combustion chambers. And you can kind of think through this. If the spring tension is on this too tight, then the engine won't add enough fuel. Um, so you'll probably be running on the lean side. If the spring tension is a little too loose, then it tells the engine uh, mistakenly that there's a lot more air that is getting to the combustion chambers than it actually is. And the engine will, or the ECU will add, probably add more fuel. So I think that's how that works. Um, again, if your spring tension is too loose, then you'll be on the rich side. Uh, if your spring tension is too tight, you'll be on the lean side. So depending on where you are, you can adjust the spring tension of this by um, loosening the, the, the screw right here. And I think you just have to hold it while you loosen it, move it a few teeth, um, whichever way um, is right for you, and then tighten that back up. I think that's number one thing that you should know how to adjust um, if you don't like your mixture. The second is the coolant temperature sensor, uh, which is located at the thermostat housing here. And I do have like, I think two or three episodes uh, in the build series that talks through exactly what's on the thermostat housing and what the sensors are. The thing that you can do is do a resistance test, resistance test on the coolant temperature sensor. And there's, um, there's a bunch of write-ups on how you can do that, but that's the second thing that you should check. You, you should check that the coolant temperature sensor is sending the proper signal to the ECU because the, um, how hot or cold the engine is uh, also helps the ECU determine how much fuel to use. The third is the throttle position sensor right here, uh, and I just popped the cover off. It usually has a plastic cover, and it's on the side of the, um, the throttle valve. So if you pop this cover off, you'll notice that there's three prongs in the throttle position sensor. So as the throttle is opened, that little middle prong gets moved from right to left. 
So right now it's completely shut. So it's the middle prong is pushing against the prong on the right. As the throttle is opened, it pushes against the one on the left. And um, my understanding of this is that this doesn't necessarily change the air fuel mixture dynamically. It's really more of a step change. It tells the engine either you're at idle or the throttle is slightly open, which probably means that you're cruising. Um, so the ECU leans out your mixture a little bit. But if you push it uh, further than that, it actually starts pushing against the throng on the or the prong on the left, which tells the engine to kick in an extra um, to kick in extra fuel, so that your engine can run a little bit on the rich side, and it's safe for the engine to do so, and provides the most optimal power output. So you can adjust this um, by moving the prongs, um, or moving pretty much the, the third prong, this last prong on the left, so that uh, you can kind of adjust when that extra kick-in of fuel happens in relation to the throttle position. So those are the, really the three things that you should know how to adjust, and as a bonus, um, if you want to more uh, easily uh, trick your engine into using more or, or more or less fuel, then you can install this something like, um, or you can install something like this. I, I think this is called a resistance pot. What what this does is it varies the resistance depending on um, how you set this pot up with this little knob here. And uh, you hook it up in line to the coolant temperature sensor. I don't really want to do this and because I already have the wiring harness all nicely wrapped up here and I'm not that eager to cut this open, but I might want to do this later just in case I want to just play with it and see what happens. Um, but you can also use something like this to, again to just trick your ECU into thinking that the engine is either colder or hotter than it actually is so that it um, uses more or less fuel. So, and that's pretty much it. So now I'm gonna show you guys what I did to fix my particular problem, which was just that the, the mixture was really lean when the car is idling. So we're not gonna touch this for now. Um, and we'll try to see what this screw does to our ratio when we're at idle. But first I need to pop out the the AFM unit that's actually in the car because turns out that little screw or the idle adjustment screw is that's stripped so I can't move it on this unit which goes to show when working on these cars even turning one screw can turn out to be fairly complicated. So I have <laughs> I have the cover held together by two latex gloves um, tied together because I didn't want to silicone that shut again until I knew that I was absolutely done with adjusting it. Removing this connection is always a really big pain. So here are the units, uh, or the two units side by side. This one is the one that we just pulled out, and this one is the one that we're about to put in and both of the covers are off. Uh, uh, a few things to note. So you can see this one is the one that we just pulled out and like I mentioned, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that screw is completely stripped. So somebody tried to mess with that um, before I got it. And you know, there's still a little bit left, but I try to jam this screwdriver in there to turn it, it will not move which means that screw is probably corroded um, solid in there. I can't get that to move, which is really why I'm using this one because this screw moves really uh, cleanly. 
Second thing is that um, the spring tension, I can just kind of feel how stiff the flap is inside. Um, I don't know if it's just in my mind, but the one that we just pulled out seem a little bit more stiff than the one that we're about to put in. But you know what? I don't really know if that's true. So the only way to tell is uh, putting this in and seeing what the mix looks like. All right, so we have the alternate unit installed. Uh, I'm not gonna bother with the, the air intake right now because we're, we're only gonna be running it for a little while. Uh, so let's start up the car and see what the idle mix looks like and see if we can adjust it. So we were able to see that turning the idle mixture screw clockwise does bring the uh, air fuel mixture, at least at idle, to a slightly richer mix. And I adjusted it to something like 15 to 15.5, which should be good. Um, I expect the car to run a little lean when it's just um, idling. But we do have to still road test this AFM because uh, in the last episode, we went out with the other uh, AFM that was already in the car, so this thing has never been road tested. So I'm gonna pop the air cleaner back on here and just rubber band this uh, back together to see that, just to make sure that we're still um, where we wanna be at um, in terms of air fuel ratio when the, the car is actually running on the road.